Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. I hope you had a really enjoyable and relaxing holiday. Or if you didn't, um, well, I hope you're relaxing now that it's over. <laughs> I know the holidays aren't always fun when you have a, a dog who's afraid of visitors. Um, we have one of those here. So this week, we're finishing up our sequence on nail filing. Before the holidays, we did part one and two, which was about, um, we talked about paw handling and getting to holding the dog's nails. We also taught them how to lie on their side. That's the position I'm using in these videos. You can use any position that works for you. Um, this week, we're actually getting to the introducing of the nail file and the filing part. So who is this video for? Um, what we talk about today probably will be helpful if you've gotten to the point where your dog will allow you to handle their paws. If you can't handle your dog's paws, go back to last uh, part two, that video, or even part one possibly, um, of our nail, nail filing series. You can find those on our blog and work through that stuff first. Um, these are all kind of general guidelines, by the way. You'll probably have best success if you go over this material with your trainer and work together to um, sort of individualize the training for your own dog. So if your dog does allow you to handle their paws, but you still can't, you know, do their nails, file their nails, then um, this is the video for you. So we broke down nail filing over the last... Um, three sessions into these three steps. We trained a position that we wanted our dog to be in for nail filing. Um, and the one I'm using in the videos is lie on your side. Then we worked on just handling the paws without actually doing anything with the nails in particular. And then this week we're doing the filing. All right, so introducing the nail file. There are lots of ways you could do this. Uh, this is what we did with um, Pancake and how I usually sort of start out. Any dog, any particular dog might need some, you know, tweaks and changes to the plan to meet their individual needs. But I usually start with this as the sort of skeleton plan um, in the very beginning. I usually do something with the nose, with a nose touch, just showing the dog the file and letting them sniff it and rewarding them for that. Um, you don't have to do a nose touch. You could do any behavior, even just looking at the file. Um, then I add the nose touch in when the dog is on their side in that position I want them to be in for nail filing. So in this first step, I just do whatever position um, they're in naturally, standing up, sitting down, whatever. Then we put them on their side or ask them to lie on their side um, and say, okay, can you still check out the nail file in this position? And then, um, and this is a place where you may need some smaller steps, but and I'll show you some, some suggestions. But since you already, in theory, have trained up to the point where you can handle your dog's paws, you're just going to touch a nail with a file. Um, you may or may not, I put this in parentheses because you may or may not need a step like this, but um, you can manipulate the nail like you were filing it with your finger. Um, before bringing the nail file in because the nail file is going to make some noise and there's going to be a different sensation with it that might be you know tougher for your dog so an in-between step might be to do some filing quote unquote with your with a finger and then we'll just introduce one small file um and for filing motion, you may need to break it down um, into like start with really short little swipes with the nail file and work up to longer ones. Um, you can vary how much pressure you're using. There are probably other ways you could break it down as well. Um, but just things to think about as you um, see how your own dog responds to this kind of training. Once you can do a, a decent, you know, single file with a with your dog's nails, you can start to increase the number of sort of swipes <laughs> or filings um, of each nail. And it's worth, um, oops, let me get rid of this. It's worth uh, mentioning that you may need to train each nail separately. Um, some dogs have 
uh, are more comfortable with some of their toes being handled than others. Uh, for instance, one of my dogs has an old injury on, on one toe and that toe is always harder for me to file. I have to be more gentle and go more slowly. Um, if your dog has any arthritis or anything that might vary across their toes. So just keep in mind that just because you, you know, train on one toe and it's going great, there's a good chance you might have to back up a bit when you go to a new, a new toe, a new nail, you might not be able to just, um, jump right into whatever you left off with on the previous one. All right. Um, how to work through the steps. So again, it'll depend on your individual dog. The guidelines I'm using with um, Pancake for the most part are um, if he is staying on his side on the position that I trained him to hold and he's not doing any flinching or pulling his feet away, then I say, okay, we're good. And if he can do that consistently on one sort of step of the plan, then I'll move ahead. Um, but if I do see any flinching, pulling the paw away, you know, getting up out of position, then we'll back off and do some easier training for a bit. All right. Oh, if you have any questions while I go through this, go ahead and post them below the video. They'll pop up for me. Okay, let's look at some video of introducing the nail file. All right. So I said I normally start with something like a showing the dog the the file, um, having them maybe do a nose touch. You don't have to do nose touch. But here, for example, here's Pancake just bopping it with his nose and he gets a treat. And then we're going to do that same exercise with him on his side, which is the nail filing position. So I want to hold it kind of low like that so he doesn't have to get out of position to, to touch it if I'm doing a nose touch. All right, now I'm gonna move on to touching a, one of his nails with the file. I'm using two hands, because remember we worked up to two-handed handling last time. And I'm no movement at all with the, with the file, just the touch. All right, now this is the in-between step I mentioned where it might be helpful to kind of, mm, well, I'll show you. F pretend like you're filing the nail like your finger was a nail file, um, getting some motion in the nail. That can be a helpful in-between step, depending. So here I have his little foot. I'm kind of <laughs> just um, kind of thrumming his nail. I don't know. All right. Moving on to actual filing. Remember that you can do, um, you can break down the kind of filing you're doing. Obviously, we're we're already breaking it down here by number of strokes with the nail file. So I'm just doing one, but you can do shorter or longer um, strokes or swipes. Uh, you can use more or less pressure. You may need to experiment a bit, work with your trainer to see um, what your dog needs in terms of these modifications. So here's a really tiny, I just did a really tiny little uh, stroke with the nail file. That was a little bit longer one. So the nail's in contact with the file for longer. That's a longer uh, stroke with the nail file. All right, and once you're able to do some decent, you know, you're, you're getting a f nice full stroke with the nail file and you are having whatever pressure that you think you need on the file to do a good job filing the nails, you can start building up the number of times you're doing your filing. Um, you're going to want to do this slowly, of course. So we just did one. So now I'm going to do one, two. In the beginning, I usually only increase by one stroke. There's three. five. Usually after, th sometimes after three, I'll skip to five and then 10, but depends on the dog. So I think this is a 10 stroke um, rep. And you'll want to build up to whatever number you think you want to do between treats. I usually, 
with pancake right now, I'm doing about 10, 10 strokes per treat with my other dogs. I might do 20 or 30. Um, I don't personally feel the need to go higher than that, but you could, if you wanted to, you just have to work through it systematically. Okay. So something I, that I think is helpful, um, to making progress in this kind of work is to bounce between steps a bit instead of always making it harder and harder and harder um, within a training session or within a nail filing session. So um, that means that you're varying the difficulty and it's not always in the upward direction. It's not always getting harder for the dog. So in early training, for instance, when you're just starting to do filing, you might alternate um, actual filing of the nail with just touching the paw or touching the file to the nail with nose touches with some easy stuff. Um, and later on, as you're starting to do more serious filing, you might want to vary the number of strokes or swipes with the, with the nail file um, up and down a bit. So not always going higher in number. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, and if you stick with what's mostly easy for your dog right now, that can keep, make sure the sessions stay fun, that your rate of reinforcement is high. Um, and you can still make progress with those sort of more difficult reps um, without making a session that's just all difficult for your dog. You can make progress more quickly this way sometimes. So here's just a few examples of short um, clips of sessions where we're bouncing around in difficulty. So here I did a nail file touch to the paw. Another touch. A hand touch, <laughs> rather vigorous hand touch. A file, nail file. A file touch. Another hand touch. So mostly easy stuff. So on in this little session here, the single file of the nail there is the hardest thing we're doing. So most of the reps are easier stuff. Hand touch, nail touch, file touch. Here's another example. Manipulate the nail a little bit. A couple files. Ask him to touch the file with his nose. That's easy for him at this stage. And here's some more. So nail file touch to the nail, a single file. This is, I think, when he's a little farther along in his training. Five. Um, okay, so we're doing at least five files there. Maybe that's a, a, the hardest thing we're doing in this session. Then I did a single file. Then I did two. So you see, I'm not doing like five, 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 five in a row, and I'm not doing five, six, seven and constantly making it harder. Um, if five is kind of the highest step he's at right now, I'm interspersing that with a lot of easier steps. That does keep the rate of reinforcement nice and high. Oh, it looks like we're going to 10 this time. So I did a 10 and then I followed with something really easy, just a single, a single swipe with the nail file. All right. So that is it for today, guys. That was kind of short, but um, I hope it's helpful. You'll want to take things slowly as always with any of this body handling training, especially when you've got a sensitive or fearful dog. Um, just make sure that you're working with a trainer, um, if you aren't a trainer yourself, and um, making adjustments that are are tailored to your individual dog. These are just examples of things that have worked for Pancake, um, and it's a little bit of my general approach to nail filing, nail file training, um, but training needs to be, you know, individualized for your dog. So, um, if you're struggling, reach out to us or reach out to your trainer if you're already working with someone and make sure that uh, you have that support you need so that you don't get stuck. Because this should be possible to do um, and to make steady progress. So if you're not, um, probably it's, a, it's time to reach out for help. Um, don't forget, you can find the previous sessions for nail filing um, at that link at the top. That's our blog. Um, we're also on Instagram, YouTube. 
And then the bottom two links are our business Facebook page and then our free support group. All right. Any questions about nail filing? Um, how to get started on this? Anyone stuck at a certain point that's kind of relevant to today's material? I can, I'm happy to help with that. Um, you can post, if you watch this later as a recording, still feel free to ask questions um, if, or email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at dogkindtraining.com. Um, and we'll try to give you help if we can. We may ask you to sign up for a session with us so we can get a look at your dog. Usually we need video and a little bit of information to give you good advice. Um, but uh, if you're already sort of DIYing this or working with a trainer on this, I hope that this gives you some, some ideas to discuss with your trainer so you can keep making progress and move forward. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Again, Happy New Year. I'll see you next week. Um, we'll move on from nail filing and, and talk about something different. All right. Have a great week, everybody.